Hello there, welcome to CCTV News. Live from Beijing, I'm Pan Deng. China's Shenzhou 10 spacecraft will be launched on June the 11th at Northwest China's Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. And Space Center spokeswoman Wu Ping says Nie Haisheng, Zhang Xiaoguang, and female astronaut Wang Yaping will take part in the mission. Nie Haisheng will command the mission. Shenzhou 10 will dock with the Tiangong 1 Space Lab, where astronauts will conduct scientific experiments. An automatic and a manual docking will be performed. Shenzhou 10 will stay in orbit for about 15 days. This will be China's longest space mission to date. Wu Ping also says the functional examination and the joint tests of the spacecraft, the carrier rocket, and ground facilities have been conducted at the launch site and all are in stable condition. Preparations for the mission have been completed. The spokeswoman has also outlined the purpose of the mission. The launch of the Shenzhou 10 spacecraft will take personnel and goods for the Tiangong 1, the target orbiter, and test the docking technology and function of the manned transport system. It will further test the capability of the combined spacecraft to the life, work, and health of the astronauts, and the ability of astronauts to perform a space mission. It will also study the adaptation of the astronauts to the space environment and carry out scientific experiments and try to repair the spacecraft. For the first time, the astronauts will give a lesson in space. Well, the three astronauts, Nie Haisheng, Zhang Xiaoguang, and Wang Yaping, have met the press. During the press conference, Nie Haisheng said he will command the mission, his second space flight, after the Shenzhou 6 mission. Zhang Xiaoguang briefed the media about how the crew's work schedules have been altered compared with the Shenzhou 9 mission, and Wang Yaping, the only female in the crew, that she is looking forward to becoming China's first teacher in space. I feel honored to take part in and to command the mission. At the same time, I feel more responsibility. I hope our crew members and I could accomplish our mission in the Tango One Space Lab. We will stick to a work rest schedule which we're used to on Earth. Compared with the Shenzhou 9 mission, we will take up evening duty this time so every few members can get enough sleep. Our food specialists are also making personalized recipes to make sure we can eat better. This will be the first time that our country will hold a class from space. We are all students in face of the universe. We will explore the universe and acquire knowledge. Let's meet at our space classroom. Well, Shenzhou 10 is China's fifth manned mission into space. It will take astronauts and cargo to and from the Tiangong 1 space lab. Like the previous Shenzhou 9 mission, it will include a manned docking with a spa space station. Jing Yingqiao has more on the three astronauts who will take part in this mission. Nie Haisheng will be the mission's chief commander. It will be his second time in space after also taking part in the Shenzhou 6 mission. And this mission is something new in store for him. On Shenzhou 9, there was a 24-hour rotation policy, which meant the crew had to work 24 hours a day. But this time, we can sleep during the night, and after finishing our daily duties, we'll have time to relax and do things, like appreciate the beautiful view of space and listen to some music. Nie Haisheng was born in a small village in Zhaoyang County in central China's Hubei province, the sixth of ten children. Nia's family was so poor that he only finished middle school with help from his teacher and neighbors. I was in the second year of junior high school when my father died. My family was so poor, I was forced to stop school and work in order to earn money. My teacher visited my family many times to try to persuade me to return. Finally, I went back to school. I wouldn't have what I have now without my teacher. That was the most important turning point in my life. The second turning point was after I graduated from high school and joined the army to become a pilot. That was the first step along my career path. The third turning point was passing the physical test for astronauts in 1996, which finally offered me the opportunity to go into space. Zhang Xiaoguang was chosen in 1998 for China's space mission. Fifteen years later, finally he's ready to go.
I will look at our beautiful planet, our beautiful homeland. I can find out whether it's possible to see the Yangtze River and Yellow River. I can take a look at the deep universe and shining stars. I feel very excited. Since the team of astronauts was created in 1998, China has carried out four manned space missions. Whenever they reach space, they always phone their families. And this time is no exception. I think of my father. He said, son, go, be courageous and careful. I also think of my wife. I know she's very busy. Our child is taking exams for high school. A couple of days ago, I went home and said, you must be very tired. You know what she said? She was like, not at all. This is what I must do for my family and my love. Wang Yaping is the only female in the crew. She'll become the second Chinese female astronaut in space. It's been a long and winding road to the launch pad. It takes a great deal to become an astronaut. You have to be outstanding overall, have great specialty knowledge, go through lots of rigorous training to adapt to the space environment, and take very strict tests that allow almost no errors or mistakes. Before becoming an astronaut candidate, Wang used to be a pilot. She flew as part of relief efforts following the Wintran earthquake in 2008, as well as in other operations at the Beijing Olympic Games. I remember the first time I flew a plane on my own. I turned around and found my trainer was not with me. I was really thrilled and had a good shout in the cockpit. It's like I could finally do this on my own. One united Chinese dream, they can fly themselves. Jane Chow, CCTV. China's space ambition dates back to the 1960s. So far, the country's first launch center in Zhouquan in the northwestern Gansu province has sent 29 satellites into space. Tang Bo reports. About 20 minutes' drive from Dongfeng Space City is China's very first satellite launch center. It is called Base 2, where China started its space program in the 1960s. Once fully occupied with the country's top space scientists, it's now only guarded by six soldiers. The chief designer of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center, Xu Kejun, used to work there, and he tells me why people had to leave. After decades of operation, launch facilities at Base 2 became less suitable for more launch missions. The old umbilical towers and related facilities couldn't meet the needs of the new launch technologies for China's manned space program. That's why we need to build a new launch center and abandon this old one. Although deprecated, Base 2 still inspired Xu on the design of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. We adopted the vertical testing and short-term vertical transportation systems that were used at Base 2 in our design of the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. The new launch techniques actually originate from the old site. In total, 29 satellites were launched from the old site, not mentioning missions for launch vehicle testing. And this is the launch pad from where China's very first satellite blasted off in 1970. It's no longer operational and serves as an educational base. And in the more than 40 years since that launch, China's space program has made tremendous progress. Today, China is one of the major players in the space arena. Chinese communication satellites and weather satellites provide China and other customers with their valuable services. In 2003, China became the third country with a successful crewed space program by sending an astronaut into space aboard Shenzhou 5 spacecraft. Five years later, Chinese astronauts on board the Shenzhou 7 spacecraft completed their first spacewalk. In 2011, China launched the first module of their space station, the Tiangong-1, and successfully completed the docking with Shenzhou 9 spacecraft China has also turned its focus to deep space exploration, starting with the moon. It launched the country's first lunar orbiter, Chang'e 1, in late 2007, making China the fifth nation to orbit the moon. Xu tells me that the old launch center carries the hard-working spirit of Chinese space working staff, and that will continue to inspire more people to contribute as China's space program moves forward.
唐博 CCTV 九泉 Satellite Launch Center。You're watching CCTV 